Welcome to my channel, Mathematics MS Simplex. Today we'll be doing sequence and series. Now, my first discussion is about sequences. What do we mean by a sequence? If I ask you for an example, what will be your example? The common example is for persons to say two, four, six, eight where each term is separated by comma. So this two represents our first term, four represents our second term, six represents our third term. Now, if I just have four numbers in my sequence, then this represents a finite sequence where I can count the numbers that is in front of me. However, if I'm showing that it continues, then it means this is an infinite sequence. So if I give a sequence of three, six, nine, and 12, we can see that there's a pattern for this infinite sequence. And we usually separate each term by a comma. So if we talk about a series, then a series is when we're finding the total. So we're adding the terms that we have in the sequence. So this two plus four plus six plus eight represents a series where we're finding the total. This will be a finite amount of numbers, so that means we can go ahead and find the total. So 2 plus 4 is 6, 6 plus 6, that's 12, and 12 plus 8 gives me 20. Now suppose we're given a general term, meaning we're given Tn equal 2n take away one. We're given this and we're asked to find now, find the first three terms of the following general term. This is what is going to assist us in finding the first three terms. Now, if we think about it, when we're counting, we would say, we'll say one to represent the first term, two to represent the second term, three to represent the third term. So the first term is when n is equal to one. The second term is when n is equal to two. And the third term is when n is equal to three. So now we're going to find what exactly is the value for the first term. So replacing n to be one, we will have T1 is equal to 2 times 1, take away 1. So T1 is equal to 2 times 1, that's 2, take away 1. So T1 is equal to 1. If I'm going to find T2, where T2 represents the second term, replace the letter N with now the number two. So we have two times two, take away one. So T2 is equal to two times two, four, take away one. So my second term value is three. If I need to find my third term, then it means I'll replace n to be three. So we will have t3 to be equal to, replacing this n with three, so we have two times three, take away one. So t3 is equal to two, three, six, take away one. So t3, is equal to five. So that means the first three terms of this general 
term are one, three, and five. So if we wanted the first five terms, then we will need to find out n equal four and n equal five. Now we'll never start at zero or a negative number. We don't have a term called the zero term, so we can't say n is equal to zero. And we don't have a term called the negative term where we have negative five term. That's not possible. So we're always starting at one when we're trying to find the terms. Now let's look at this general term and we're going to do the same question where we will be finding the first three terms of this general term. So the first value is n equal one. Now in this specific example, if you realize the numerator has a power n and the denominator has another n, so it means we will be substituting one twice. So replacing n, so we have t1, which represents the first term, is minus two, one as a power, and then one plus two. So the first term minus two to the one is negative two and one plus two gives me three. Now n equal two means we replace wherever we see the letter n with the number two. So we have minus two to the two all over two plus two. Now just remember when you square a negative number, it will be positive. And some calculators, you definitely, if you're going to use a calculator, you have to use your brackets to be on the safer side. So you have to enter as how I've displayed on the screen where you have open bracket, negative two, close bracket, square. So squaring this, we have four and two plus two gives me four. So in a case like this, I can go further. So four into four goes one time. So my second term is one. If I'm going to do T3, it's the same concept, replace N with three. So T3, minus two Q, that's negative eight, and three plus two to give me five. So it means that the first three terms of this general term, negative two to the power N over N plus two are negative two over three, one, negative eight over five. Here we have the summation sign where it means sum up with a lower limit and the upper limit. And this is used when we're talking about a series. Say for example, we're given this summation to do where we need to find a sum from n equal one to three for n square. What we'll be doing is substituting n to be one. So we have one square, but because of the summation sign, we will have plus, then replace n to be two. So we'll have two square, then replace n to be three. So we have three square. So one square is one, two square is four, and three square is nine. So one plus four is five and five plus nine gives us 14. So the sum from n equal one to three is n squared. So the sum from n equal one to three for n squared is 14. Now, if you realize in this example, this tells us where we start and this tells us where we stop. So that is why I have one, two and three.
So we could have a series or n equal negative two to one. So what we can do is write down the numbers that we need to substitute. So you have negative two, negative one, zero, and one. So if you realize we're counting as if we're counting from the number line. So you are, you're not going to see negative two, then negative three. We're starting at negative two. So it's negative two, but we're going towards a positive. So it's negative two, negative one, zero, and one. So now we're placing n with the respective values. n to be negative two, so we have negative two squared plus one plus, replace n to be negative one. So we have negative one squared plus one, replace n to be zero, so we have zero square plus one. Then we have n to be one, so we have one square plus, one. So calculating what we have in each bracket, we have negative two squared, that's four, and four plus one, that gives us five. Negative one squared, that's positive one, one plus one, that's two. Zero squared, zero, zero plus one, that's one. And one square is one, so one plus one, two. So our answer for this is five plus two, seven, seven plus one, eight, and eight plus two, 10. So look at this final example. The summation from R equal negative two to positive two. So we will be replacing r square minus one over r minus six with the lower limit starting at negative two and counting onwards to the positive side. So we'll have negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. So when we're replacing, it doesn't matter what's the letter that is given, it is the same concept that we'll be applying to substitute into the fractional form that is given. So it's nothing different from before. We'll be replacing r to be negative 2, then negative 1, then 0, 1, and 2. So replacing r to be negative 2, we have negative 2 square, take away 1, over minus 2, minus 6, plus negative one square, take away one over minus one minus six plus zero square, take away one over zero, take away six plus one square, take away one, over one take away six plus two square take away one over two take away six. The so minus two square is positive four. So I'll have four minus one over minus two minus six, that's negative eight, plus the negative one square is one, so we have one minus one over minus one minus six, that's negative seven, zero square zero, take away one over zero minus six, that's negative six, 
positive one square is one, take away one over one, take away six, that's negative five. Two square is four, so this will be four, take away one over two minus six, that's negative four. So two square is four, four take away one, and two minus six, that's negative four. So four minus one, that's three over, if you realize it's a negative eight, so it means the entire value of this fraction is negative. Now one minus one is zero. So by right, this is zero over negative seven and zero over any number is zero. Now zero minus one, that's a negative one. So we have negative one over negative six and negative over negative is positive. So this is positive one over six. One minus one, that's zero. So zero over number, it's zero. Four take away one, that's three. But it's three over negative four, so that makes it a negative three over four. And this is equal to negative 23 over 24 or 0 0.958. Of course, we have more decimals, but I will be rounding it off to three decimal places. So behind the eight, you should be seeing three. So therefore you leave the eight alone. The only time you round up is, is when we have a number five or greater behind the eight. So it means if I was rounding it off to two decimal places here, I will have 0 0.96 because behind the five is an eight. So we have to add one to the five. Thanks for watching guys. Please don't forget to like my video and subscribe to my channel. And please remember to tell a friend about my channel. Have a great day.